Slow motion, or slow-mo as it's known, is a great skill for any videographer or filmmaker to have. Slow motion footage and cinematic excellence are a match made in heaven. The reason for this is that nothing else brings movie magic like slow motion. Slow moving shots are a trend that has been around for the longest time and its demand is not being dampened even today. Slow motion shots give the viewer a longer time of impact to process the emotion of a clip and what it's trying to convey. The slow motion effect also gives attention to aspects of video that may have otherwise been lost in translation. What do you shoot? Events and weddings, commercial work, products, music videos, creative personal projects, whatever it is, some well-placed and well-done slow motion video can go a long way to improving your shooting. Hang on till the end of this video because I'm going to explain everything you need to know about shooting slow motion video so you can create some awesome cinematic footage. Hi. I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. If you like what you see in this video, stick around till the end because I've got a couple of photography, video, filmmaking, and editing freebies, and even some training courses I'll tell you about that will definitely help to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work, and help grow your business through earned media exposure, which is basically through free advertising. Remember. I welcome your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. So, how does slow motion work? You have a number of frames per second that you shoot at when you are shooting video. With a still image, you are just taking one picture. Click, that is just one image. The image is called a frame. However, with video, you're taking 30 images, or in some cases, 24 images every second, and when put together and played back, this gives you moving footage. The footage is a compilation of hundreds and thousands of images or frames just flying by your eyes. A standard frame rate of 24 frames per second or 24 FPS essentially means that you are capturing 24 images per second and then putting them together to get footage. For a slow motion video, you double or triple the frame rate, you have more images per second and there are no empty spaces and abrupt motions when you stretch it out in post and that gives you slow motion. This is how you maintain the quality of footage after having stretched it out for slow motion. However, you you cannot just set a frame rate based on your own preferences. Different kinds of emotions make for different frame rates. If it is a slow motion of someone's expression, 60 frames per second will do. But if you have a lot of movement in your shot and you want to show it like cars colliding or exploding or something like that, then you will have to use a higher frame rate like 120 frames per second or more. In short, slow-mo video is just a process of playing footage back at a slower frame rate than it was captured. This won't work with just any footage though, or it won't work well at least. You'll need to make sure you're capturing at a fairly fast frame rate for it to work. Some more modern DSLR and mirrorless cameras have the ability to shoot up to 120 frames per second, but 60 frames per second can still be slowed down nicely. When it comes to playback, 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second is the most common. Let's use 120 FPS and 24 FPS as an example because the math works out nicely. If you record 120 frames in a second, then play the footage back showing 24 frames per second, your clip will take 5 seconds to play because 120 divided by 24 equals 5. This is 5x slow motion. Though specific numbers will vary, the relationship between capture speed and playback speed can be applied anywhere. It's as simple as doing the math. So here are some slow motion video tips. 
you can't just crank your camera to 120p and expect good results. There's a little bit more to it than that. Thankfully, few key tips for shooting will see you right. It's important to note that recording at higher frame rates may come with a few limitations. Your camera may crop and only use part of the sensor to record, or it may limit you to a lower resolution than its ordinary video capabilities. So you have to check your individual camera to see what it does. Conversely, and without straying too far into broadcast formats, if you're in a PAL area, which is most of the world outside the United States of America, you may be able to get some extra frames out of your camera by switching your camera to NTSC, provided that you're editing and playing back on a computer and not on an actual TV, you're unlikely to notice a difference. With that out of the way, let me give you some other tips. Number one is, my first and most important information tip is making sure you keep the 180 degree shutter angle rule in mind. If you're experienced with normal video, you may have this one covered, but it can be overlooked when jumping between settings. As you would when shooting 24 or 30p, just remember to keep your shutter speed at roughly double your frame rate. Of course, this rule is just a guideline and you're free to experiment, but you should keep it in mind. Many find that increasing the shutter speed beyond double the frame rate produces good results. Experiment and see what works best for your specific shooting situation. There is something I want to mention before moving on. That is about slow motion compensation. Basically, slow motion compensation is adjusting the f-stop on your lens to compensate for the change in shutter speed. This is an extremely important consideration and as such deserves its own video. I've done a video on slow motion compensation that reviews f-stop changes versus frame rates. Now I'll link to that in the video description below so you can watch it after watching this video and you'll be able to learn what to set your lens to when it's time to shoot. Number two, beware of light flicker. With what could be a fairly fast shutter speed as determined by your frame rate, you'll likely need a good amount of light. If you're shooting in artificial light, it's important to know that some light sources will flicker when captured in slow motion. As lights flicker in specific frequencies, varying by country, adjusting your frame rate and shutter speed may lessen or get rid of the flickering effect, but it's best to get some test shots before committing to a shoot or just shoot using lights designed for video from the get go and this will avoid the problem. If you can't shoot slow motion footage outside in bright sunlight to ensure that you have enough light, you're going to have to do it in a studio setting with loads of artificial lighting that you can control. You can use high CRI lights to bring that cinema magic. CRI stands for Color Rendering Index. A CRI is a quantitative measure of the ability of a light source to reveal the colors of various objects faithfully in comparison with an ideal or natural light source like the sun. You can learn more about this important topic on the video I did on color rendering indexes. I'll link to that in the description below as well. A word of warning, certain lights will flicker at certain frequencies. This flicker may not be visible to the naked eye, but it will definitely show up in your footage, particularly slow motion footage. A light that flickers could mean disaster on screen, even though they would work fine in any other circumstance. Slow motion footage can be potentially ruined by flickering lights. LED lights are a safe bet when shooting slow motion because there is no chance of voltage fluctuations if they run on batteries. Be certain that you have checked every single light before go time. Some people also use tungsten lights. They work for slow motion shots very well, but make sure that they are either over 2K lights or that you are using a power generator in order to keep flickering at bay. All of this complication arises when you cannot use daylight because the sun is always the safest bet. My third tip is to consider the movement. If you're new to slow motion video, it can be easy to perform the same camera movements you normally would, but you've got to consider that your playback could be five times slower than normal or something else. As such, a normal pan will look snail paced. What I'm saying is, 
don't be afraid to really throw that camera around when shooting in slow motion. The same goes for anything in your shot. It needs to be moving at a decent speed as well so it looks right when in slow motion. Number four is this. I've covered visuals, but what about the sound? You can stretch an audio clip to match the speed of the video, but there's a chance that it will sound warped and strange. Sort of like this. You can stretch an audio clip to match the speed of the video, but there's a chance that it will sound warped and strange. Sort of like this. Your camera may not even record audio during high frame rate capture. In either case, for the best results, you're likely to have to add some effects in post or record the audio separately on a separate audio device to get good sound. Additionally, there's a world of stock audio sounds and music designed just for this, though, so don't worry, you just have to usually pay for those online. Number five is, don't be gratuitous with your use of slow motion. Use it sparingly. Slow motion has a time and a place, and when overdone, it loses its impact. Similarly, you should know what's going to be played back in slow motion and what's not when you're shooting. Don't just shoot everything in 120p just in case you may feel like slowing it down later. This is where creating a shot list ahead of time will come in handy when it's time to shoot. So how do you edit slow motion video? When you shot your footage, you're ready to edit it. There are a few things you need to know when editing footage with unusual frame rates or different clips with a mixture of frame rates. But that's nothing too complex and we'll go over it now. The first step is setting the playback speed of your sequence in the timeline. If the first clip you drag in is 120p, your editing software may play all the following clips back at this frame rate and that's not likely to be something that you want so you need to remember to set your time length to 24p or 30p or whatever your normal frame rate is and then add slow motion clips after that. They will need to be rendered but that's a small price to pay. Depending upon your editing software you might even have a setting to adjust the speed or duration of slow motion clips. Premiere Pro does this by right clicking the video clip, selecting speed duration and entering a percentage. Once again, remembering the relationship between capture speed and playback speed is important here. Too low a percentage will play the footage slower than your timeline speed, which doesn't look good. For example, with a 120p footage and a 24p timeline, you could play the footage at 20% speed at the lowest. In software such as Final Cut Pro X or iMovie, these settings appear under the speedometer icon. One of the best things about slow motion video is that it looks great straight out of the camera. You only need a split second of steady real-time footage for a shot that lasts a few smooth seconds when played back slower on screen. Now, if this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, how have you used slow motion footage to improve the look of your scenes? Leave a comment below and let me know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the info that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,500 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos, and particularly your videos, to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. 
In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training course for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up in editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors that get you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from firsthand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is geared to get you free advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you as well as links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I've also done other videos on filmmaking and video production, and I'll link to those in the description below as well. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers, just like you on Facebook, where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experience. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I personally work in myself. It's not a public group, like my business Facebook page I talked about earlier. That's public and anyone can see that. You'll find a link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.